Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. La palabra se encuentra en Salmo 34. Verso 1. Cuando lo tengan, digan. Verso 1. after the music stops. Uh, I named this reflection after the second album that Christian rapper Lecrae released. When he was asked about the title, He said something along the lines that Christians should glorify God with their lifestyles by pointing them to the person of Jesus Christ. I would like to take that title and apply it a little more literally. And, you know, actually ask what happens to us after the music really stops. Now, I can speak from personal experience. When I say that sometimes I go to church. Because I want to escape feeling sad. And I need my daily injection of positivity. De positividad. And because of that, Sometimes I wind up praising God when the singing is on fire. Or when the preaching is at its most Pentecostal. Uh, you know, for example, only when the pastor is speaking tongues can I really shout amen. Por ejemplo, eh, cuando el pastor solamente está hablando en lengua, yo puedo gritar una amén. Only when the singer screams into her mic. Um, cuando la cantante o el cantante está gritando en su micrófono. As if she were in a heavy metal concert. Como si estuviera un concierto de heavy metal. Can I really feel God's presence? Que yo puedo sentir verdaderamente la presencia de Dios. But like any kind of concert. Pero como cualquier concierto, or any kind of conference given to us by a charismatic speaker, o cualquier conferencia dada por nosotros por un hablador carismático, what we get out of that service, lo que nosotros sacamos de ese servicio, depends only on the person in front. Depende solamente de la persona en frente. Now I'm not against people screaming when they preach. Ahora, yo no estoy en oposición cuando la gente grita, cuando predican. As long as they actually have something biblical to teach you. 
Mientras tanto tengan que decir algo bíblico. Every preacher has his or her style. Cada predicador o predicadora tiene um, su lado. And I have no right to say that one style of preaching is better than the other. Y no tengo ningún derecho de decir que un estilo de predicar es mejor que el otro. But why should our praise only be as strong or as passionate? Pero por qué nuestra alabanza tiene que ser tan fuerte o tan apasionadamente? As the preacher or the singer or the evangelist is loud or talented. Como el predicador o el um, evangelista o el cantante um, canta o predica de duro. Uh, Psalm 34. Verse 1 says, Dice, I will extol the Lord at all times. A en todo His praise will always be on my lips. Su de en mi boca. I looked up the word extol. Um, it, it's translated a little differently in Spanish. Se traduce diferentemente en español. But uh, in the dictionary, extol was uh, basically another word for praise. Pero en el diccionario, básicamente, la palabra alabanza es alabanza. And uh, praise yeah. is defined y alabanza se define como as a proclamation una proclamación or a description una descripción of the glorious attributes of a deity. And thanksgiving. In other words, it's not just saying that God is pure and holy because those are his good attributes. But praising him includes being grateful that God is pure and holy. Uh, to use a more secular example, whenever somebody does something good, if your kid has good grades, or your friend wins a competition, you congratulate them. And when you congratulate that person, you're actually praising them. You're not praising them like you praise God, but uh, con con recognizing what they do is a type of praise. Now, you can't congratulate somebody if you don't recognize the good in what they did. And you can't you, you can't congratulate them if you don't appreciate what they did. If you don't see the value in it. So the second part of this verse uh, to me is sort of it, it, it almost says the same thing in the first one uh, in its message. It says his praise will always be on my lips. So basically that verse tells us that God is to be praised always. He's to be praised in the noise or in the silence. Whether that noise and silence is in a church. Or whether it's outside of the church. Whether the preacher or singer has talent. And whether they don't have talent. Our praise shouldn't depend on what's around us. It should depend on how holy God is. 
When you open your heart to that kind of praise, amazing things can happen. I remember once listening to somebody singing. And that person was not the best singer. But when that person sang, he was giving God all the glory. He was recognizing his holiness. And more importantly, he was appreciating and thanking God for that holiness. And because of that, I felt the Holy Spirit more with his singing than I do with most other talented singers. Now, <clears throat> some people may argue that that verse and maybe even the entire song is written in the point of view of one man. That uh, the entire song is written from the point of view of one man. And so that's his opinion on how praise should be. And let's assume he's right. Even, even if he's not, let's just assume he is. Even if we do believe that to be true, that opinion is still based on God being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Most of all, it's based on the idea that God is all good. And if God's goodness is equal to his omnipotence, omnipresence, or omniscience, then wouldn't it be logical that we praise him at all times? In fact, I think it would be logical that we should praise him even more than all times, if that were possible. Because if God is infinitely good, and our praise is limited, then we could never express enough praise to show how good God is. His praise should always be on everyone's lips. I'd like to end uh, this uh, reflection with something that's more my personal opinion. And started off by asking, what if God isn't real? If somebody doesn't is not sure whether God is real. Well, to use an example, when a movie or a book comes out to the public, uh, it gets awards and people recognize its achievements. And praise it. And sometimes those books or movies develop a very strong following of people. Uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, people become really passionate fans of that movie. Uh, and you know, sometimes those people, uh, they dedicate a lot of time 
and they celebrate that movie or book as often as they can. They'll hold parties themed after that book or movie. They'll go to conventions dressed as characters from that book or movie. And they'll very likely memorize quotes from that book or movie. And in the extreme cases, they'll live by the code of honor developed in that fictional universe. And if that's if that's true, then why should we not honor a God we're not sure is real? That we're not sure is real. Whether we're confident in his existence or not, he's still good. Even if he does something in the Bible that to us may look like a sin or may seem like he's contradicting himself, he's still good. He's just so great or big that sometimes we don't understand. In my opinion, either way, the good things that he's done still outweigh the bad. Because he doesn't have to do anything good. He's God. He could do whatever he wants. And what do we do to things that we do consider good? We praise them. Hasta que no impacte que se mueve el día.